So right now we're looking at the biogas compression that uh, Russell Watrous set up for us using an old refrigerator compressor. And in this case, we've got a full bag of biogas that came from the, um, the I guess let's call it the aseptic digester. It's the one that's beneath our RV that we've been heating up with those uh, hex coils with the gas water heater. And because we've heated it up, we've gotten a good amount of gas here. And we're going to see how much of this gas compresses into this 30 pound propane cylinder. To use a 30 pound propane cylinder, we have to observe the fact that they're not made for high pressure because propane liquefies. So you can store a lot of propane into a small and weak container. Biogas not compressing uh, into liquid means that you'd need a much thicker, much more robust cylinder to hold it. And for natural gas cylinders, they use very thick steel, sort of like scuba tanks. And uh, in this case, this is thin wall steel, so we can only compress the gas up to about 200 pounds per square inch. We've decided the safest limit is 160 pounds per square inch, which is what this dial will indicate. And we have a pressure on off switch so that if it gets up much past 120, this thing will simply shut it off anyway and then go back on when the pressure drops. So um, we're compressing biogas that is raw. The only thing we're removing from it using this sulfur filter is the hydrogen sulfide, which would damage the compressor and ultimately damage the tank because it forms sulfuric acid, which would eat away at the metal. So we do have these clay pellets in here that are iron oxide that will remove the sulfur down to about uh, between 0.1 and 2 parts per million. And then we have a container, a milk jug, that has metamarillonite, which is kitty litter. Uh, one cup, and uh, for every cup of kitty litter we have, we have one tablespoon of tile cement, which is otherwise known as calcium oxide, otherwise known as um, quicklime. And that can be dangerous if you have too much of it, but at one tablespoon quicklime or tile cement with to one cup of kitty litter, you get an absorbent mixture that'll take out the moisture that would also damage and corrode the metal parts, particularly if it had hydrogen sulfide, because that would form sulfuric acid in liquid form. So you're getting out the water vapor with this after you're getting out the sulfur content. And then it's just going into this refrigerator compressor, coming out of the refrigerator compressor, goes in here at the top, comes out here, and goes through an inverted butane tank that is being used as an oil trap so that where the gas goes in as it rises, any oil from the refrigerator compressor that has escaped will go in here and drip down to the bottom and then go back in this oil drain return right here. Otherwise, this would run dry and seize up and you'd ruin your compressor. So the three pipes you'll see on your compressor, the top one is for the gas out, the bottom one is for the, I'm sorry, sorry, let me scratch that. The top one is for the gas in, then the bottom one here in line with it is for the gas out, which then goes into the oil trap and then into a T and to the cylinder. And the T then is also teed off to a regulator so we can then use the gas with a valve. And then the oil return going back in to this lower, uh, um, uh, lower pipe. So when I turn it on, you'll see here, it'll spike in wattage usage. So I'm gonna turn on the pressure switch here. And it went up to 1000, down to 460, and then down to 194. Its usual running temperature after the initial inductive spike is about 160, so it'll settle down into that. And that means that we are now compressing the biogas from this tank to show that it's going through I have a lighter and I have the uh, the uh, regulator and unless something's very wrong, when I light, turn this on and light it, whoa, see the fire. So we got good biogas and you're wondering, I'm shooting a jet of biogas to a bag of biogas, but here's my hand, it isn't going to melt it from over here. I don't know, can you see that, that beautiful flame? So 
we definitely have, ouch, ouch, ouch. Okay, there, that makes it more spectacular, doesn't it? All right, so it's good flammable biogas, and it's uh, being compressed into this tank now, and we will see how many watts it uses. In fact, it's now settled to 148. Okay. So we'll see and see how long it takes for this bag to be compressed into this. This is now rising from zero. I can actually show that. Oops, if I can find it, there it is. All right, so we expect it to get up to about 120 before the pressure switch shuts it off. But uh, it's uh, working. And then we will, um, then this, this what happens is we use the gas It'll use some of it up, and if it gets down to about 100 PSI, it'll turn the pump on again. It'll keep pumping it in. So that's what we're going to investigate here. Should take about an hour. In an hour, at, um, at 140 or 139 watts, an hour is about 140 watts that it'll use. This amount of gas here is somewhere in the order of 750, anywhere between 500 and 750 watts, half a kilowatt to three quarters of a kilowatt. So using 140 of it to compress it is not a total loss given the better uses that we can do with this. And then we can fill this up again. So I don't have that many bags, so I'm gonna compress this one, let it fill, use this, compress it. And the advantage of having compressed gas under high pressure is that we'll be able to run the refrigerator off of it. We can already run the, run the water heater and the stove off of this through a 20 watt pump, but running the refrigerator needs a higher pressure, so we're storing in there. And we're already up to 20 PSI. So there we have it.